otherwise known as a Series 7 whisperer. But I'm here to help you with the SIE today. So I'm at SIE exam whisperer, the SIE idiot. I don't know. Let's just go with capital advantage tutoring and let's get on it. So I did a video a couple of weeks ago with my risks table. Okay. I showed a table. I had a funny little thing person saying, I think about it all day. And I got a ton of requests to have that on there. So it's so quick. You can't take a snapshot of it. So I'm going to put it up here. You can take a snapshot. Unfortunately, you'll have to have my face in it, but it is what it is. And let's let's hit it and let's rip it apart and see what it's all about. So here's the table I do. You can't write this on a hot sheet because it's too much, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the risks of each of the products are. OK, so let's start with this. And I think I've done a video similar to this, but let's get on it. We're going to leave this up the entire time. So look, if we buy a corporate bond, it trades in eighths, right? Boom, a little little trick there. So what risk? Everything with a check mark is, is a risk we have. So it does have default risk because, and how do we measure that? That's triple A, double A, A, triple B is all investment grade. Anything below triple B is speculative, which a lot of people can't buy and it makes, it causes problems. That's how we measure default risk. So it does have default risk. It has interest rate risk. What's that? Interest rate risk is a risk that rates will go up and the price of your shitty little bond will go down. Reinvestment risk, as long as it's not a zero coupon, it has this. Reinvestment risk is a risk that as you get paid your coupon, if rates are dropping, you're going to have to reinvest all that money at a lower rate. And overall, your original, say you have a 5% bond and just paying your, you know, 50 bucks a year. And then a new, the new bonds are being issued at 2 and 3%, a lower rate. All the money you're getting from the bond, you're going to have to reinvest. But the only thing available is that lower rate. So now your new old bond is paying a good one, but your new money is earning less. That's reinvestment risk. Zero coupons do not have that. Call risk, Okay. Call risk is a risk that if they're going to call it back, usually when interest rates drop, issuers would rather pay the lower rate than your rate. So they'll issue, they'll issue a new bond and use that money to call yours back. Boom, call risk. Inflation risk, of course, anything that's fixed income has inflation risk. If you have this 2022-23, then you're watching this, you're going to understand inflation is a rising cost of goods. That's a CPI. So if things, gets, if things get more and more expensive and you're only getting the same amount of money, you have inflation risk. That's kind of why fixed annuities are not good for long term because you're paying the same amount of money. Like if you're earning 500 a month, you know, say, say even you're earning two grand a month. As an older person, you're 60 years old, that's your retirement. Maybe you can live on that, maybe you can't. But after like 20 years, you can be eating cat food because everything's so much more expensive. Although cat food's pretty expensive. Okay. They don't have legislative, they don't really have market risk. I mean, we can jump it back to that, but we're going to leave that out. No political, no currency, stuff like that. So now we talked about munis. They have all, it's a bond, so they have the same risk. They have default risk. They do have default risk. They have interest rate risk, reinvestment risk. They have call risk, just like a bond. They have inflation risk because they're fixed income, but they also have legislative risk, okay? Legislative risk is since they're tax-free. Remember, rich people buy munis, poor people buy corporates, wimps buy treasuries. So the reason rich people buy munis is because they're tax-free, but what if they change the tax code? That's the legislative risk they have. And again, they don't have these. Do you notice a pattern? There's like a wall here of risks. Okay, let's go to the, and remember, munis and corporates can trade in eights. Now, in a way, I have a friend of mine who I knew for a long time. And then when he found out I was teaching, he goes, I got a trick for you. I always remember how I remember that corporate, and Tommy Turner, I have to give him credit. Um, I, it's, he remember, he always said the word corporate shins, like corporate shins. Ha, ha, ha. It's pretty funny. Okay, now, T-bonds trade in 30 seconds. So if you see T-bonds and T-notes trade in 30 seconds. So if you see a quote with a decimal or a dash, it has to be a treasury, which means it has to be in 30 seconds. So let's, gonna, so let's assume that they have no default risk. So we, I list that as safe. That's why I write this one, okay? Just to keep me down, okay? They also have, they have interest rate risk because they're a fixed income. They have reinvestment risk. They don't really have call risk. They, they haven't issued callable treasuries in a very, very long time. And they have a lot of purchase of our risk because you up until this year, they've been very low rated low return, not low rated. So they have a lot of inflation risk. Again, no legislative risk. Okay. Go to the strip where you're going after you pass. Oh, that was wrong. Okay. So now again, safe. Now remember a strip is a long-term zero coupon. It's a long-term zero coupon. So that means it, um, it says, remember, remember the whole volatility thing, long and low, long-term bonds move more than short-term bonds, long and low baby. So these are long-term and they have no coupon. So they're much more subject to interest rate risk. That's why I put a lot of interest rates. Double check. There's no reinvestment risk because again, it's a zero coupon. So there's nothing to reinvest. They have no call risk because treasuries don't really get called. 
but they do have inflation risk because if you buy a bond now for college and you assume college is going to be 10 grand in 20 years, what well, college is 10 grand, the college may actually go up in price. So you do have anything fixed income, you have, re, uh, you have inflation risk. Okay, let's jump to the tips. These are treasury inflation protection securities. They move with the CPI. The actual, they change the par value up if there's inflation up. And I guess they do it if it's deflation, if it's down, but that doesn't really happen. So tips, the par value will move with inflation. So it matches inflation, but you still have interest rate risk, but a little bit less because inflation and interest rates kind of go together. So tips don't have as much inflation risk as the others. I mean, interest rate risk as the others, but they do have some. And they, ha they do have reinvestment risk because they are getting paid, okay? But they don't have any call risk and they don't have inflation or purchase of our risk because they adjust for inflation. They match it, okay? Jumping over to T-bills. <clears throat> Look at that. LMT, it's mucho empty because T-bills are considered the risk-free rate of return. Now, the longer you go out, like if you have a year, one or six months, maybe you have a little bit of interest rate risk or so, but as far as we're concerned, T-bills have no risk. They're considered the risk-free rate of return. The 90-day T-bill is truly the what the one they use. For the most part, think T-bills don't have any risk. Now, remember something. This is a question. Somebody got a question, what are you know zero coupons exempt from? Remember, you can have no risk, but you're not exempt from risk. So you can't be exempt from a risk. You can be exempt from registration. You can be exempt from taxes. That's because it's a legal thing saying you don't have to, you don't have to, it's not taxable or it doesn't have to register. You risks, you either have it or you don't. There's not a law that says you can't have it. So that's why I say you can only be exempt from two things, registration and taxation. That's it. So you can have no risk, but you're not exempt from risk. So T-bills, super safe there for parking your money. Okay, preferred stock. It's very, I probably even spelled that wrong. I 100% spelled that wrong. That's embarrassing. There should be another R in it, whatever in there. Now, so missing the R, we'll deal with it. <clears throat> Back when I couldn't spell. Now, it's like fixed income. So here's the thing. It doesn't really, it's more, they have business risk. I probably don't want to put that there, but the point is they may not pay you. So we're going to, we're going to make that, we're going to change that here to business risk. Okay. Boom. That's what we do. We call that business risk because they may not have enough money to pay you. Since it's a fixed income, it does have interest rate risk. Since it's a fixed income, it does have reinvestment risk. Since it's a fixed income and rates may go down, it does have call risk and it does have inflation risk. Okay. Now there are different types of preferreds. They have adjustable, which may not have interest rate risk. Um, they have convertible, which probably doesn't have a lot of inflation risk because it matches the stock. But for the most part, this is what preferred has. Okay. But again, if it's convertible, it may reduce inflation risk because common stock doesn't have inflation risk. And convertibles turn into common stock, they move with it, and they don't have these risks. Good. Okay. Now, common stock, that's a shit you see on the on TV, up and down, Tesla. So look, it doesn't have any of these risks. Just remember, in your mind, think default, interest rate, reinvestment, call risk, inflation risk are all bond risks. They're not, so they're all about bonds. So if you see a question that goes, what does common stock have? If you see these, you can automatically delete them. You know, common stock, it's a best, inf it's a best hedging inflation, one of them. So it doesn't have this. It won't have a legislative risk. Now it does have systematic slash market risk. And if you know what, that, you know, March 13th, 2020, the whole market went down because we thought we were closing down. Even if Google and Amazon and Apple were printing cash, they still went down because the whole market went down. And that's something you go up your finals. Do you stay up? You hey. can do it all by yourself. Let me see you do hey. it. Hey, welcome on. Happy Tuesday night. Happy Tuesday night, people. I love it. Welcome to the live Tuesday night. Welcome. It's welcome. What do I say? It's live on Tuesday night. Okay. So let's go through a couple of things. I didn't do my other video. That doesn't fit. That video I just did doesn't fit awesome on, um, doesn't fit so great. On multiple on a, on a portrait mode, so it works better in landscape. I'll fix that out. Maybe make it smaller. Do something like this. Okay. Yeah. No, I get it, Ashley. I have a video on there. I will put the video. Let's see if I can find the video on here. Uh, risk table. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, it totally wasn't work. It doesn't work that well on portrait mode. It works better. So this is the link to the video. 
Anyone who wanted to take that video, go check it out on YouTube. That's the link. Okay. Let's see if anyone on this other screen is in. Okay. We're good to go. Okay. So now, a um, couple things real quick. If you're taking the test tomorrow, what do I say? Get the hell off my live. Okay. Get the hell off. Go get go do something different. Okay. Now. Oh, the link does show up. Boom. Okay. Now. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I love that shit. Okay. So now, if you're... um. If you're taking the test tomorrow, get off my lab, go get some sleep. If you're taking it after that, no test the day before, right? But now, what you want to do, you want to be taking finals for the 7 to 10 days, full finals, and then you review them. My nose, I like I'm a coke fiend. Um, go check them out. Chris Woods, how are we? So go um, just for the 7 days before you take the test, take finals. So I'm answering. I'm going to get them variably over the next hour. I'm taking the test at a certain time. What should I do? I am fucking telling you what to do, okay? If you are taking it tomorrow, get off here. If you're taking it on Thursday, Friday after, take tests up until the day before. Don't take tests the day before. Do add knowledge, watch my crash course videos, stuff like that. Then around dinner time, you're done. And then if it's farther out than that, you take finals for at least the seven to 10 days before you take the test every day, if you can. If you can't, if you're going to do it every other day, you're probably going to go two weeks out. You got to get five or six tests in there. After you take a different t every test, what do you have to do? You have to review them. You must review them. All the right and wrong answers. Remember, everything. You have to review the right and wrong answers, not just the right wrong answers, okay? That's the deal. You cannot just do the one, okay? Couple things. One, go check out our Facebook group. It's serious. It's, um, let's see. Okay, I think so. Anyone who wanted to see the chart from the video I just did, go check on the link. I scrolled, I scrolled it up, and there it is. Okay. Okay, we'll work on. I'll work on that, Ashley. Now, timing is absolutely a thing on the sixty-three Mara. We'll get to there. So check out my Facebook groups. We have two. It's called Series sixty-five, sixty-six exam prep. And the other one is Finder Exam Prep with help from Capital Capital Advantage Tutoring as I'm a fucking study, as I'm stuttering my ass off. Okay. Okay. Now, what video is that? I don't know what video that is, but whatever. Okay. Now, I think that's my options video. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah. My options cheat sheet. Okay. So now, see it back there? Boom. My options cheat sheet over there. Okay. I was going to put the fireplace on, but whatever. Okay, guys, if you want extra resources, free resources out there, right? We got, obviously, my shit is the shit. Um, Brandon Rith has videos out there. Susie Rhodes, a past master, has videos. Um, Brian Brian Lee over Test Geek and Dean Taney over Tier 7 Girl. Now, um, all of those are free resources. Notman has some stuff out there. STC does. If you're looking for the best SI, remember, this is for every exam. Remember, guys. This Q&A is for the SIE exam, the Series 7, the Series 65, the 6, the 63, the 66, the 7, whatever, the 24, whatever exams you want to talk about, we're here. I just can't fit them all on the thing. Yeah, at least nailed it the second time. So, Mara, don't worry. It's a 30-day problem, kiddo. Now, um, if you want, if you need extra help with this stuff, obviously I tutor all day long, right? I'm at uh, my my things going across. To, I say yes questions, but my bigger thing is, if you need to reach out to me, this is my website series7exam.org, and I do tutoring all day long. I'm not. This is free. I'm not pushing for that. I, this is the last time I'm going to mention it. If I'm too expensive, which I am, because I'm a greedy fucking bastard, go check out. Go check out Michael Weiss over at series 7 examtutorcom I know I say it quick. Series7ExamTutor.com. And Elise is done. So hold on. We There's one thing I don't think we did for Elise last week. Maybe we did, but I'm not sure. But for passing and being done. Boom. But she should get a song, right? Let's go get demonetized. We're going to miss you. We're going to miss you, Elisa. We're going to miss you, miss you, miss you. Okay. Um, 
if you need extra help, every Friday night I run membership classes. I run like, um, yeah, I'm telling you, I swear to God, the 63 is all about ethics and uneth unethical, unethical and dishonest practices. You want to make sure you're not a scumbag, right? Okay. Or at least you know it. If you're, you're a scumbag, you know what you're doing wrong. Um, I do Zoom memberships. I have a couple levels. I have the cheapo one, which is membership. You get to see all the old classes on recording. $20 a month. You get my options videos. Fucking game changer. Absolutely. I've been doing them for, God, I don't know, since maybe 2009. Man, said probably 2012 I switched over to this method. But I've been trading them since I was 16 kind of thing. Not well. I, I don't trade them well, but I have been trading them. Um, ever since I saw I didn't like to teach art, it just didn't resonate with me. I didn't like I thought it was just too much memorization. So I, I switched over to this, my method. It's game changing within an hour watching my videos. You could, you could basically destroy the test. Um, if you want to go a little higher, we do 25 bucks a month. You get the options videos and a weekly class, a series seven class or the series 65, 66 on Friday nights. If you want to jump up and be fucking nuts, 50 bucks a month, you get those classes plus a, gar a, a guaranteed option. Okay. Um, you get it. You get an option class. Okay, Ryan, I failed the midterm. Let's see if it's in here. Let's see if it shows up on this. I don't think it does. Nope, not the, my my other the other third party thing is not showing up. Okay. Um, that's fine. So what it is is I think you got to start. You got to build up your. What it is is that. Well, you guys, so this is the question. So he goes, when I do chapter quizzes, I get 90s, which is fair. But what happens is, then I do the bigger ones. I get, um, I get, is that what he said? Let's see, make sure it's right. Yeah, he gets, he does bad when he does, um, you're doing the midterm and you do really well on chapter quizzes. Yeah, because you're focusing on one thing. You got to kind of practice, like almost like what you should do is do one, the only thing I can think of, do one section. When you pass that, do that section and another one, and then keep adding on until you until you can get like eight or nine chapters in there. It's hard to get used to. It's absolutely hard getting used to that. Um, getting used to the whole taking tests on everything. It, it'll get there. I promise, Ryan. I promise you it'll get there. Okay. Okay. Now, um, let's get on to this stuff. Okay. So what Nico said here, he was trying for um. Well, Nick, if you take the 60, I mean, if you have the seven, Nick, okay, Um, so Nico, Nico went for what I call permissive registration because they have the six and they won't let them take the seven. So the thing is, FINRA has a thing called permissive registration where they kind of allow you that Brady, we got this, Brady, Michelle Brady, we're going to nail this, right? Brady, Mich Michelle Brady, I assume that's what it is. How we feel, what test, how we feel, hope we're, we're scoring well, hope our scores are good enough. And remember, think this is the day you're going to take it like a savage and beat the crap out of us. Okay. Back to Nick. What? What? Fight fucking back, baby. Fight back. By the way, there are jobs all over the place. Edward Jones is hiring. Fidelity is hiring. Maybe if I'm um, Hunter, boom. Okay. Um, If you, here's my thing. And I'm going to get through all these questions. Okay. Let me, let me put that thing back on the caption. Ask fucking questions, baby. Okay, good. Okay, um, for insubordination, for not for asking for the, I swear to God, I hope it's not for the, um, but if they're under, if they, I don't think they're exempt. Okay. Uh, I don't think they're exempt. Oh, my phone's over there, so I can't do anything. Okay. Um, let's get this down here. I can read it. Down here. I have another social media thing that I'm doing a time of cast on. It's okay. Okay, now, let me get on to this. So I'm sorry it didn't work. I hope the insubordination isn't for shooting for the permissive registration. I would feel bad. Okay, we'll get to Rosine. We'll get to you. Okay, so let's jump on. Okay. Jacob, John Jacob. It's not the same one. Jacob Jacobson. Jacob, Jacob Jacobson. Okay. I love passing that. Boom, okay. Don't stress about the CTD. The biggest thing is, remember, yeah, so an RIA is pretty much you're talking about a federal covered advisor. But on the exam, they will say it. But we do have to say one thing about you passing. Yeah, oh yeah, some time to celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. Okay, back to this. Okay, just so now a federal covered advisor. So remember, guys, um, this is for the 63, 65, 66. 
A federal covered advisor will never, ever, 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 ever register on the state level unless they pull, right? So either your state or federal, never both, okay? If you're a federal covered advisor and you have an office or more than five retail clients in the state, then you just notice file. You don't register. You notice file, okay? You notice file, notice file, notice file. Boom, okay. And Michelle Brady, I, I'm just saying it again. I know you're going to pass this thing. Okay. Ivy, how are you? Okay. So I got that. I know. I'm going to try to fix that so it looks better. The portrait mode makes it hard to look at these things. Okay. You got to do two to three hours a day. Hold on. Let me get to that. Okay. Mara. So, okay. Yeah, everyone, a lot of people fail. The 63 is absolutely a timing test. You got to get that timing down, kid. When got anyone taking the 63, it's the one where I want you to take tons and tons and tons of tests, okay? You got to hammer them as much as you can and get your timing down where you're taking it in an hour or less consistently. Not like an hour and 20, an hour or less, okay? By the way, Chris, how are you? Valekia. Boom. Welcome on, baby. Okay. And at least I, I did the music for you, but I am so happy for you. You will never have to listen to my fucking shit again. You will never have to listen to me again, right? You're done. Moving on. Bye, bye, bye. I got just what I need. I need one of those, like a bye-bye birdie. Bye-bye birdie, right? Isn't that? That was a play. Okay. Boom. Keep at it, Chris. We're going to get there. Okay. Now, okay. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Mitty, love, how are you? Yes, I'm doing the, I'm doing all the, hey, baby, Carla, boom, we got this, okay? I'm trying to be all over the place. I'm on Instagram. I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. Hey, I'm here. I'm there. Isn't that from, um, what's the name of that was in Ted Lasso? He's here. He's here. He's everywhere. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get on this puppy. Trying to do some live, baby. I'm trying to get all over the place. King of all media. Screw Howard Stern. I'm going to be the king of all media. Now, let's move over to this a little bit. Now, I got to get this thing up. I appreciate it. I, I think I know my shit. I think I'm pretty good with this. Don't need the recording. Don't need the audio. Oh, I got to show the audio. That's fine. Oh, can you guys still hear me? Hope you guys can still hear me. I think, am I, can you hear me or not? Because sometimes it's, when I do what I'm about to do, it screws everything up. Boom. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to see. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Sad to say you can still hear me. I apologize for that. Okay. So now we have a good old question. So she's asking me. So I have a beta. I'm going to share the screen in a second. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Boom. And if this gets to the point where you can't hear me, let me know. Not that I would be able to know because I'm in another screen. So, I'll try to put it in the middle so everyone can see it. So, we have a beta of 1.7. Good, it's there. Okay. Now, the market had a, the S&P had a 10% return. S&P had a 10% return. And ABC... Had a 12% return, I think, right? 12% return. Crazy numbers. Okay. So what do we have to figure? First, you have to figure out what your risk adjuster return is. So you're going to do 10. Beta is a multiply, right? So you're going to do 10 times 1.7. That's the thing. So you're going to get, what is that? That's to be 17%. That means you're expected to do 17%. Okay. But how much did you actually do? 12%. So you didn't do as much as you should have. So you should have a negative. Oh, it's going to be, I'm not going to show up. Put it here. Should have a negative five alpha. 
And if it's not right, the questions are wrong. Okay, that's what you should have. So ABC did 12. You did you did 12. You're supposed to do 17. So you did negative five. Hey, Ashley, does that sound right? Let me know if that sounds right. Okay. Okay, that's a good question, Michelle. I'll get to you in a second. Okay, so there you go. Does that make sense, Ashley? I hope it does. You remember, beta is a multiplier, and then your alpha is when you do better or worse, right? So beta is a multiplier, 1.7. You multiply times the market. That would give you times 1.7 times 10 is 17, I guessed, because I can't switch off. I was hoping I didn't screw it up. Now, so I'm supposed to do 17. I'm going to do 12. I'm going to get fired. I did 5% lower than I was supposed to. Okay, so on my other vendor, on the other, on Instagram, okay. So hope that helped. Yeah, I know. Again, I like Kaplan, but I think sometimes the guys who the guys and girls who write that shit are just like they're trying to be too cerebral instead of just fucking answering. Okay. So Michelle Brady says, "What? Oh, Adich is guessing me a hard question. Okay. I understand systematic and non-systematic. Okay. So I want you to think of this way: systematic, systematic is like market risk, the whole market. So think of like." March 13th, I remember the day because it was bad. March 13th, 2020, when they announced two weeks for the cure, right? Okay, two weeks to stop the spread, whatever. It's been two years. Um, the market fucking dropped. Everything went down. Even today, everything was down. So the point is, everything dropped. No matter what you own, it was down 15, 20%. Literally everything you did was down 15, 20%. So what happened was, you can't diversify that away. That's market risk. That's systematic risk. You cannot diversify that away. You can buy hedge. You can buy options to hedge it, but you can't diversify it away. Non-systematic risk is basically what I um basically if you I buy a stock at Trump's, okay. So non-systematic risk is like business risk. You own Tesla. You own Nvidia. You own Comcast. You own something else, and something happened, and the stock drops on its own. That's system. That's non-systematic. How do you get rid of that risk? You get rid of that risk by diversifying, by spreading your shit around, spreading it all over the place, okay? So you try to spread your stuff around and go, okay. That's interesting. I know that. Okay, now, you try to spread your stuff all around so that you're in, like, NVIDIA, you're in Broadcom. Instead of just being just in Broadcom and they shit the bed, you're in Broadcom, NVIDIA, Real, S Smith Global Holdings, um, IEP, all over the place. So now you're diversified. So even if one drops, you have other ones. So non-systematic is business risk, and you diversify to get rid of it. Systematic risk, you cannot diversify it away. Interest rate risk, inflation, market risk, all are systematic risk, and you can't get rid of that. Okay. Hope that helps, Michelle. Now, yeah, I'm always fucking right. Okay, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna nail it. You are gonna nail it the next time. Now you know the timing. Yeah, I feel bad when I go see somebody go. They they ran out of time. I had a I was when I was teaching at the college last, last spring, and I got a new one I'm starting in about two weeks. Um, but about 15, 20 kids in the class, and one of them failed, and I could have sworn I told him if I didn't, I'd feel bad that he what he he timed everything to the 75 questions. So he basically was like, Oh, I'm good, and he finished with like a minute left to 75 questions, and he, he was like, We're looking for a submit. And it wasn't there because he had another 10 questions to answer. So he ran out of time. He failed. He missed by one. He got a 69. Then he timed it better. He wasn't mad at me. He, he probably should have been. But because I didn't make it super clear that it's really plus 10 fake questions. Or maybe he just forgot. I, I don't know. But anyway, so you remember that. You got it. The timing is a thing. The SIE normally not a big deal, but it can be. The 63, absolutely. Absolutely. A big uh, timing is a thing. Okay. Michelle, I'm glad it helped a little bit. You're going to rock this thing on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, that's what happens. And that's all of a sudden you think, wait, well, you finished it all. Yeah, but I ran out of time and I just had to mail it in on some of the questions. And at least Dan Wright did it. Okay, okay, let's see. Um, Yeah, Cece. So you should probably try to get two hours a day. And I, listen, I'm a big fan of morning studying. I'm a massive fan. I, I always want morning studying, okay? I really... I am, that's my biggest thing. I like people studying in the morning. If you can't, you can't, it's fine. But you're amazing 
how much more con- cognitive, I guess, is that a fucking word? Cognitive you are in the morning versus after work. You're so tired. And sometimes work, you can kind of mail it in on some days. Not all the time, but if you're a little tired. Um, but if you get two hours a day and bump it up to three on this each Saturday and Sunday, you should be fine. That, that'll that help. Okay. Oh, you you literally are done. You got the life and health done. How was it? Any surprises on that puppy? I do not teach. I do not teach that shit at all. But I, I, there's a couple good YouTube channels that help. But the thing is, like, exam effects... This is one of the times exam effects is good. They have really good insurance stuff, but at least you nailed it. Okay. 100% right. Nick, I know I'm like 20 minutes behind. Okay. Would I recommend taking the Series 66 if you're going to take the 65 anyway? I'm trying to figure out what that means. So if you're going to take the 65, then just take the 63. Like, if you're going to take the 66 and the 65 anyway, it's kind of overlap. There's no reason to do that unless you don't have the 7. So, okay. Okay. I'll get to, I'm going to get your questions. Remember, guys, remember, I'm about 10 minutes behind. I will catch up because I love when you guys talk to each other. That's when I get a chance to catch up on the questions. So, um, if you're taking the 66 and then going to take um, – Oh, you don't have the seven, then don't get the, just get the six, go take the 63 and 65. Don't bother. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. So if you don't have the seven, just get the 65. Unless you're going to get the 66, but here's the problem. Say you have the six and you're going to get the 66 for future seven. You're unlicensed until you get the 65, 63, or until you get the seven, because the seven is useless without the six, the seven. Okay. There you go. Northern Ohio. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh, okay. Okay. Kaplan's good. I Guys, for the SIE, I always say this. I'm a big fan of Achievable. I'm a massive fan of Achievable. I love them. And they, even for the seven, any exam, I like the way they teach it. I just say always get a supplement and always get the Kaplan Q-Bank. And Michael Weiss has a, a code for it, so. Oh, Megan, my tutoring link, I'm behind a little bit, is series7exam.org. It's series7exam.org. That's the easiest way to remember it. Series7exam.org is my um, tutoring link. Again, I try not to push it that much on here. Uh, This is much more about helping people out, but I'm not going to fucking turn on money, right? Okay. Right, so you don't have the seven, right? So, right, so, yeah, I know, Nico, you got the um, six. So, just... You can go to like an Edward Jones and they will sponsor you to take the seven. What you could do for yourself is get the 63, 65 out of the way. And then if you go to Edward Jones or Schwab, whatever, you just got to take the seven and then you're done. And it shows that you can pass the damn test. So that's my thing, Nick. Okay. Michael, ten, countdown is 10 days. Amazing how fast it goes. Okay. And by the way, Mara. 30 days goes so fast, right? It's a 30-day problem in a 20 and a 30. It's a 30-day problem in a 30-year career. It's such a small thing and nobody cares. Okay. I love it. There we go. Woof. So it's in before they fire you, get a new you find a new place. Okay. Rosine. Myra, no. You can't, well, you can go lawyer and get a subpoena, but hold on. Um, okay, so what are you going to do, Rosine? What you're going to do is take a day off, if it was today, and then go back and just read the book. Um, just go back and read the book cover to cover. Do, don't take any notes, just read it cover to cover. That's your best bet. And Michelle, yes, I think I like passport with those okay. I just think they go a little overboard, okay? Passport with is fine, they're going to teach it to you, but I do think they go a little overboard, okay? Um, again, so Razine, the first thing you do is read the book, spend the week reading the book, then come back on here and we'll talk. But in case I have a heart attack and die, and I can't tell you. Now, guys, remember, if I die in live, what are you going to do? Share this shit of this. At least I can go viral in death. Okay. Now, if, see, this is my ADD. And so the bad thing is having ADD and getting old, because then you kind of get, you get sidetracked and then you totally fucking forget what you were going to talk about. So after you finish reading the book, Go back and do chapter quizzes, or the, if you have STC, do the progress exams. Do like 10 to 15 questions on each chapter, review it, 
And then after that, start taking finals. But you should spend time reading the book. It's hard, hardcore. Okay. I don't know that you can send a subpoena, but administrators can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Serious Seven Wish on the tombstone, which will go along with the thing that Michael got me. Hold on. Oh, God, is it so Hold on. So I got two things, which is my favorite things. Okay, hold on. This is one of them. And I don't know why it's, it's hooked around a thing. Is look at that. Look what my color rosa got me. Little ears. So put them on, right? Okay. There you go. Okay. Now that's one. And then Edward Jones got me this wonderful likeness. How about that? Uh, fun stuff. Okay. I feel like a horrible morning DJ. Okay. So you can't subpoena, but the administrator can. Boom, Zach, probably. Boom, boom, boom. You guys aren't going to see it because it's on Instagram. But damn, damn, damn. Okay. Uh-oh. What did I do to the chat? Let's see. Oh, here it goes. Zach, baby, this is all for you. I just want to celebrate. That's for you, Zach. Are we done? Done, done, done. Is that the deal? Are we on? Are we out? Are we gone? We we done, Zach? It, moving on to the world, right? Okay, moving on in a bigger place. Okay. That's true. Very true, Elise. I have a big thing. Okay, first of all, administrator can subpoena. I don't think we can without um Sean. I have, was just thinking about texting you the other day and asking how it's going. You got to be in your own. You got to be in your own place by now, right? He he switched over. How about this? This is a guy. So I'll get to. So first of all, Mara, you we can't send subpoenas, but administrator can. Lawyers can, but they think they have to go through a court. But administrators can send subpoenas anytime they want. So Sean Animal, right? He didn't need. He, I don't think he needed the licenses, but he's working for a place. Farmers, I thought it was. Oh, that's awesome. And then. They farmers goes, you know what? Out. They nope out of Florida. They just go, fuck it. We're not gonna stay in Florida anymore. We're out. So he's like, fuck. So he went over to eight. He went over to he got the exams done. He needed them done on a timeline. He nailed them. And that starts like a four or five month like in, internship process with State Farm. And now he has his own office. And he was supposed to get it in January. I think he did. Cheers to you, baby. A lot of pressure. Don't see. We're gonna get you. Okay. And again, this is big, okay? Sean, I want to talk to you. Let's talk next week, all right? I want to let's get on the phone and chat and see what's going on. Because I'll be coming down to Florida in June. Maybe I extend it and come visit. Okay. Going to Sarasota, baby. <clears throat> right. So understand, guys. And I always said Michael is, is a tough guy. I yell at him all the time, but he's he can handle it. He said it once and he didn't mean it. I'm just I'm just gonna pick on him forever now until he passes. A lot of people go, Oh, I need to pass. I need to pass. That is not the attitude. You have to say I'm going to pass or I want to pass. Not I need to, because need is need is a position of weakness. Okay. Need is a position of weakness. I don't know how to need something. I want something, or I'm going to do something. So everyone who's going to take the test in the next day, I want you to type in here, I'm going to pass the exam. That's what I want to hear. Everyone who's going to take the test, I ever want everyone here to say, Oh, Maddie, how are you? I wonder likes last name. Okay. Call watching from Panama. Okay, so now it's so I have I have two places. I, I'm trying a new Instagram one, and I have this one. Okay, so remember something: we are not okay. We are not thinking we need. We think we're going to pass. So everyone, I want everyone to say, "I'm going to." Pa-. Everyone who's going to take the test, you're going to say, "I'm going to pass," not "I need to pass." Boom. Okay. It's weird seeing the Instagram and the other one. Because the Instagram will look like a total loser, but I got a lot of people commenting. Okay, now on the other one. Okay. Boom, Nick. Uh, Nick Kitchen, I'm happy to help my man. That's why I'm doing this. I'm just trying to help people out. Okay. Ooh, good question. Uh, positive vibes. Um, by the way, that's that's kind of what Notman's all about, the positive vibes. So, guys, Notman's another good vendor, right? The, the only problem is you can't buy partial. You have to buy the whole thing, and they're expensive, but they're good. They have a lot of good supplements. Positive vibes. Um, Probably not much. Maybe just the Muni stuff. 52 is the Muni stuff, right? Isn't Series 52 Muni's? Am I wrong? Yeah, Muni's with securities, right? Yeah, there's some, not a ton. 
I mean, you some some of the muni stuff, but not a lot. But again, I don't think the fifty two is all that fucking hard. Okay. Okay. Boom. And anyone who's anyone who's on YouTube and wants to check me out on Instagram, I'm at Series 7 Whisperer on Instagram. And I'm at Series 7 Whisperer on TikTok. Ticka tocka. Ticky ticka talk. Okay. Boom. At least you gotta go. Go, baby. Go. Get on here. Joe, enjoy your life. I'm aiming to retest in April for Series 7. Okay, so I think it I think two hours a day is your number. I think two hours a day has to be your number. Oh, I lost I lost connection for a second. Yes, that's the thing. Remember something. So I'm telling you all these guys, right? Here's the thing on this. When you see these questions, this is the thing on all the exams. The vendors really try to fuck with you. They really go out of the way to try to screw with your head a little bit. But the test does it in a, more, a little more cruel way. The question, you, because on a vendor, CAP on STC, Achievable, sometimes you don't know what they're asking, okay? Sometimes you don't know what they're asking, okay? And then you can't figure it out. But here's the thing. On the vendors, on the real exam, you will always know what they're asking. You will always know what they're asking, okay? But the questions suck. The answers suck, right? Because you say, oh, I got it. I know what the answer is going to be, and it's not there. It's like some perversion of it, right? So the answer, four chairs, the four, that's my new word today, right? So the more, the four answers are a little off. That's the thing. So they're not, they're not perfect. So they, it's kind of like putting like a, a circle in an oval, right? It'll get there if you turn it the right way, but it's not perfect. And that's why people feel like they're failing. So yeah, Mara, I, I'm telling you right now, it works. So you're like, I knew the answer, but it wasn't there. So you got to open your head up and see what else could be an answer for that. And, and that's why I do, that's why if you look at my practice finals exams, I do those so that you can see how I, and remember though, most of those tests, I've never seen the questions before. So they pop up and I react to them as they come in, okay? So what you want to do, you want to make sure that um, that you process it. And I show you how to kind of keep your mind open. Okay. Okay, let's see. I had a question about splitting commissions. Yeah, you guys can't read it through this stuff. But I had a question about splitting commissions with an agent and a question to BD approve the commission. Yeah, as long as, here's the deal. An agent can split commissions as long as they work for the same firm or an affiliated firm, common ownership, and they're equally registered. It means they're registered where the customer is. That's the big thing, okay? So they can only split commissions if the customer's okay with it, the firm's okay with it, and they're equally registered, okay? Arnaud. Boom. C'est la vie. C'est la vie, Arnaud. Okay. Boom. I love it. That's awesome. Viva la, viva la, where are you? Viva la Canada. Okay, so that's good. Um, I used to, um, when I went to camp when I was um, younger, we had, a, a, is it Quebec, which is all the, um, do they all speak French? I'm not sure. We always had problems with them because we were up in Vermont and it was like, it was us Americans and then the French guys who hated us and we didn't like them. But it was the 70s, shit, 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 stupid shit happened. But that's awesome or not. Hold on, wait a second. I almost forgot. I wish I had a French thing. I just want to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Right, so I'm a big fan of using multiple vendors, okay? I'm a big fan of that. There you go. Cap get the Cap and Cubank to supplement. Just see if anyone in there is talking. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a fun one. Okay. Ah, the old... Okay, Mara, I'll get to that one in a second. Well, no, it's okay. Sorry, we're going to go back to that. So this is the question, right? We talked about this, right? You always ask this. So it's really you compare your your actual return, which is in this case twelve, to what you're supposed to. So the beta one is supposed to, okay? Okay. The t um the beta is what you're supposed to do. If you do more than that, it's always the distance between what you're expected and what you did, right? So 17, if it's 20, it's a 3%. If you and a 3% positive alpha. So if you do better than expected, you have a positive alpha. If you do worse than expected, you have a negative alpha. Okay. 
So let me get back to this one. So Edith, Edith she's going to fucking kill me on this one. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to take me a couple of seconds to write this stuff in here. Am I sharing screen yet? I am. Okay, so now. Okay, so let's get on this. So now we're going to do, okay, has 15 million shares outstanding, which I have to write down. Because remember, so this question is a 144 question, okay? So this question is, what does a corporate insider control person have to do? So 15 million outstanding. So what's what's 1% of 15 million? George. George, that's awesome. I know it was last year. John Kutita, my man. John Kutita, animal. Animal had a bad time, failed it, I think, once or twice. And then worked his ass off for six months doing real work. And then he came back and destroyed the test after when he was pretty sure he wouldn't. But he came back strong. Never fucking gave up. Hold on. This is for you, George. I just wanna celebrate. Okay. Now back to back to Idichi's question, which is just going to fucking drive me nuts. 15 million. And then... Five weeks, I don't care about five weeks ago. Four weeks ago, how much? Remember, you only go back to four four weeks, right? So we have four weeks ago, 200,000 shares traded. 200K. Now we got to go on to the next one. When you have a question, it moves into multiple things. And Mara, I'll get you on this one, okay. And then three weeks ago is 245. You guys are making me do fucking math on this, aren't you? Then it was 245K. Then 187, big difference. Really have to do math on this. 187K. And then the last one is 225. So remember, you do the last four weeks. And everyone I talked to on the test said they don't even do this anyway. 225. So you have to, what you have to do is decide if you can tell the greater of 1% of the outstanding. Let me do this. 15 million, I, even if I know it, I'm going to do it in the calculator, 15 million times 0. 0.01, that's 150 grand. So I'm sure it's going to be one of the bigger numbers. 150K, that's the one thing. Now I'm going to add these puppies up. 200 plus 245 plus 187 plus 225 equals that. 857 divided by 4 is 214. So I should be able to sell... 0.25. Is that the number? I, I, if I did the number right, let's see if I got it right. Let's see. Where's the rest here? To? Next three months, it should be 214. So, Adichie, did that how you did it? You don't do all five weeks, you only do the last four weeks. Okay. And if they, so, and here's the thing the vendors love to screw with you because they go, oh, how much can he sell if he sold it a week ago? And then you got to use the other ones. It's so stupid. But I think what you do is you, 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 the, one, the greater of 1% of the outstanding or the four-week trading volume, average of the four-week trading volume. We have 15 million, right? We have 15 million. Okay. Now, we have 15 million. So 1% of that is 150 grand. Then we add up the four dates, 200, three, four weeks ago, 245, three weeks ago. 187 two, two weeks ago and 225 you add them up you divide it should be 214 you do the higher of the two 214 is higher than 150 so we sell the 214 it's got to be it okay and again not a lot of overlap between the 52 and the um and the, i say some but not a lot okay hold on one second you asked another question okay now there might be a question so a couple things right the 0.75, that's usually the 12B1 fees, or max is 12.75. But if it's a no load fund, remember, so if a no, so if the 12B1, if it's a no load fund, the 12B can't be more than 0.25% of the NAV or 25 basis points. But if it's a regular one, they can be as high as 0.75% or 75 basis points. Hope that helps. So that's probably what we're talking about a no load fund. Remember, a no load fund can absolutely. The no load fund is absolutely can have a 12B1 fee, but it has to be very low. Okay. So 
So it did should we got that? It should be 214. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um so yeah, if it's something like this, right? So in one day, if I give you a if I call you up and say, hey, buy the stock whenever you feel it's right, but it's in the same day, you don't need discretion. It's literally just um a not held order, right? But if I say buy it when you want, and I tell you, and, and, and you have to choose how much or whether to buy or sell, or it lasts more than one day, then you need um, <clears throat> you need power of attorney. Now, this one, however the market, let's say, so you told them to buy it when you should buy. Okay, that you would be a violation, okay? That would be a violation, okay? Because you can't do trades. If you don't have power of attorney, you can't do trades for your customer without telling them ahead of time, okay? So the big thing here is that you can't do trades without seeing them ahead of time, okay? So again, anyone who wants to join me from Instagram, join me on YouTube. YouTube, I'm doing the same thing under Series 7 Whisper. Um, <clears throat> now, the client's in the wrong. Unless they had power of attorney, the client would be in the wrong. If the client had power of attorney, they're fine. They did the right thing. They might have been unsuitable, but they're fine, okay? Um, Cat O'Connor, how many hours do I, how many hours do I think, um, you need to recommend to pass the SA? I think you got to get 60 to 70 hours. Depends, right? If you have sort of a finance background or, an, or some stock background, then maybe it's 50 hours. I mean, I know people have done it in two weeks, right? Or a week. Uh, that's nuts, but it can happen. You also have to get an easy test. But if you put 60 to 80, 60 to 80 hours in, couple hours a day, maybe do a little longer on the weekends, three or four. And I'm a big fan on the weekends studying in the morning, right? I know I want you to study before work, but look, do three hours, do eight to 11, and then you're done for the day. Then go have fun, see your friends. Don't don't ruin your whole day. Eight to 11, nine to 12, whatever it is, just get your three hours and maybe do eight to 12, but take an hour break in there to, to break it up and then go do your own thing. Couple reasons for that. One, you don't want to burn out and be depressed because your friends are doing shit, right? And two, if you do it in the morning, that's going to be conscious. When you go out in the night, you'll be like, ah, maybe I don't, I don't want to drink too heavy because I need to get up. Okay. Rosina, so uh, yeah, we can do any exam. So hope that helps. My, I hope my explanation of what to do helps a little bit. Okay. Um, I think sometimes. So Adetchi, I think sometimes. Yeah, I mean. It, Use what you want to do. Go, did you? If you want to really test it, go to my go to my YouTube channel. Okay, go to my channel, and then um, yeah, you're taking the SIE, and these questions are popping up. Fucking it, yeah, Lisa. No, you're gonna burn out. Okay, Aditya, I just saw the other question you post. Those are not serious. Those are serious. Seven questions, not SIE. I had a guy took it today. He said he saw zero math, zero fucking math. Okay. Yeah, I mean, go on my go on my YouTube channel. Find the thing that says practice finals or free finals. The first one in there is a 75-question one. Go do that one, and that's like that's very correlated to the test. The other one is go on their website. Go to the FINRA one and take theirs. Those are what the questions will look like. I think that one's a little more convoluted. Oh, uh-oh, here we go. This one's going to screw me. Ma, ten, ma, Tennessee, la mama jama. I guess it's Tennessee. An employee in the office department of a broker dealer asked an operations professional what is meant by the term covered. Exempt. Okay. Okay. So a covered put. Remember. So option. So when you hear the word covered option, you know you're selling an option. Covered means there's a stock position. Uncovered means it's naked. Like if you're naked, you're uncovered, right? Don't picture me that way. You will leave here forever. Now, um, yeah. I mean that's why I joke. I don't go to the beach because I might. They might come home with a harpoon sticking out of the back. So I don't go in the water. Now. Covered, so if you have a covered call, that means you're long stock short a call. If you just sell a call by itself, it's uncovered, okay? On a put, if you sell a put and you short, if you short stock and sell a put at the same time, that's a covered put. If you just short a put by itself, it's an uncovered put. So again, sh buy stock, short a call, covered call. Short stock, short a put, covered put. Short a call by itself, naked call. Short a put, and the by itself is a naked put. Okay, is it? They could go all the naked put. Hope that helps. Mama Jama. Okay. Uh, what's that name? Christian. That's a, that is a hard. 
Christian, I guess so. Christian, that is a great name, Christian Baron, right? Okay, now, Baron, okay. You have to take full exam. You have to. I know it's a pain. I'm sorry, Lisa. I am so sorry about that. Okay. Um, and somebody asked about the tutoring. If somebody, again, I'm not trying to push the tutoring at all on these things, but if you really need tutoring, go to my website, series7exam.org. Go to my website, series7exam.org, and um, just you can go on there and book. Okay. Also, guys, check out, once you pass and all that, even before, check out the FinPro Coalition. I just did an interview on there. I don't know if he posted it yet, but he asked me some good questions. Wasn't video, it was written, which means that's scary because I can't fucking write. As my daughter, who's on here sometimes, knows that I am um, not verbally challenged. I asked him, but whatever, whatever you want to call that. Auditory, not auditory. Tactile challenge? I can't fucking write. Okay. I write like I speak, which is fucking dangerous. Okay. I think Kaplan is good for the SAE. I think Achievable is better. But if you have Kaplan, if you don't like him, get the Achievable and just use both questions, okay? Okay. Yes. Matter, yes. Yes, of course I do. It's the Series 6566 playlist. Boom. The Series 6566 playlist. Boom. Okay. Michael, top 10, baby. 10 days, baby. The countdown starts. Okay. Um, the average, I tell everyone... I tell everyone it should be four to six weeks, okay? I don't, Tommy Dorsey, Tommy Dorsey, he's not like a, isn't there like a, there's something there, okay? So, um, all right, is it the Tommy Dorsey? So, um, and his orchestra. See, as I say, it, it comes to me as I'm talking, right? So, it should take four to six weeks. Maybe, and look, if you have some finance background, three to four weeks. If you don't, shoot you to four to five weeks, okay? Yeah, no, it's me. It's me. I have other people, but I, they have their own link to the website. It, it's it's not even connected. If they if you can if people can't find me with me, they get on the waiting list, and then we offer to see if they want to go with someone else. Okay, that's right. Serious seven months. I'm twenty minutes behind. Okay, I'm glad that helped. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Get it. yeah, but you can't just. Here's the thing. You can't just have the 65. You have to have an investment advisor with it, okay? You have to be part of an investment advisor, okay? So if you are doing, if you want to rate, if you want to manage money and shares assets, you have to create your own IA, which shouldn't be that bad. Um, again, if you want to charge your fees, you have to create your own IA or work with one and do it. You can't just have the 65 and do it, okay? Beto, Beto O'Rourke, I love it, awesome. Nine days. Hold on. That's fine. You know what? Um, that's fine. I have, I have. Look, I have a whole SIE playlist. If you look, I have an SIE exam playlist. I have it on Spotify. Pod, it was all over. It's on. I have a podcast for that. And guys, that's true. Don't forget about that. Hey Google, play the latest episode of Blue Collar Finance. Yeah, you could do that. That's not a bad idea to do that. Okay. We got it, Dawn. We're going to get it. Sean, I think you would have, but we were there. Okay. I love it. Pretty boys drive Ferraris. Prime rate, broker loan rate, discount rate, Fed funds rate. That's what the Fed does. They've been announcing the discount rate. They've been jacking it up. Fish out of water. Okay. Damn right, we're going to pass. This is all positive stuff. Okay, I'm going to fucking pass this better. Yep, so yeah, so it's probably not all overlap. Okay. Two hours a day, baby. Two hours a day, powerful source of love. Two hours a day. Yes, I mean, if you if you can get through the book with at least 10 days to go, then yes, you can do it. Okay. So A lot of people, okay. Yeah, that was for the essay in 52. Not a lot. Christian! I'm so fucking far behind. I apologize. I just want to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Sorry about that, Christian. Way behind. Okay. Yeah, Nam is pretty good. Okay. Oh, Lisa's got that question. Okay. What is the total return? Okay. Oh, total annualized return? I love that. Okay, hold on.
Okay, one quarter. Okay, so let's do this. So let's try to get this on here. Watch, I'll fuck this one up. Somehow I'll screw it up. Okay. So it was one quarter. So remember, whatever number we come up with, we multiply by four because that's an annualized, right? No, yeah, four, qu four quarters in a year, right? Okay. So let's see. So stock paid a 75 cent dividend. To say, so we lost. Okay, so let's do this. So we made 75. Where's my thing? I guess I have to share screens. So you can see what I'm doing, right? Problem is I can't do the whiteboard and see the screen at the same time. So it kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Okay. So paid a 0.75 dividend. And the stock went from 75 to 67.50. Okay. So it went down. So we lost 7.50. Okay. Why would I have to be sorry? We lost $7.50. And we also, we got the 75 cent dividend. So in reality, we only lost 6.75. Okay. Then you're going to multiply that times four. Oh, actually, we do it that way. Hold on. Let's do it this way. Did they, um, so now we got to do that. So we're going to, we invested 75. So we're going to do 6.75 because that's what we lost divided by 75. That's 9%. So. So, so like, look, we lost 675. That's a negative, right? So negative 6.75 divided by the original, which is 75, okay? That's going to give us a negative 9% because it's 0 0.09. Since it's annualized, you have to multiply times. Since it's since we remember, so if you look, everyone, it's in one quarter, beginning of the quarter to the end of the quarter. One quarter, we're going to multiply that times four. So four times nine should be 36. Okay. Four times nine equals 36. So it should be negative 36%. It sounds like a stock that I would have. Okay. So we're going to be nine times four, negative nine times four, because that's, remember, four quarters in a year should be negative 36. If it's not that, I must have missed something, but that should be the answer. So again, total return is always your growth. Now again, they can probably say they're not counting the dividend, and then it, see if they if they don't count the dividend because some tricky. You, you do seven point five divided by seventy five is ten. Hold on, seven point five divided by seventy five is ten times four. So that'd be losing 40 percent. But boom, it should be negative. Yeah, I know it's a pain in the ass. Should be negative 36%. Because remember, annualized means you have to stretch it out to a year. So if it's over six months, you multiply by two. So over four months, you multiply by three. Okay? And then, but the total return is always your growth plus or minus your income divided by the original. Remember, holding period return and total return are the same things. Okay. The cap and Q bank is not free, kid. It's, it's going to cost like 40, 50 bucks. If you go on, my, if you go on either my Facebook group or our, our Series 7 exam, Michael Weiss has a link for you. Okay. Okay. If you want to do it, just go on my website, series7exam.org, and pick it, and you will go through. And you, we can go. You may not need it. I mean, if you're if you're passing everything, save your money, right? I mean, I'm happy to help. I want everyone's money. But make sure you watch my videos plus my Series, series 66, Series 6, Quick and Dirties. Okay. That's a big, tall order. So, Cynthia, first thing you should do is go to my playlist called Options Basics. And know what test are you taking, okay? If you're taking the SA, you don't sweat it. But if you're taking the 7, want, feel free and take – look, here's my upsell. Go um, join my options group. It's like 50 bucks for the month. Okay. No, Lisa, no crying in the closet. Boom. Okay. Outdoor Hunter, I'll get to you in one second. So, now, I am only 20 minutes behind now. I'll catch up. Um, go go to my options basics playlist. Watch them. Come back on Thursday. And boom. Okay. Can I mew? I don't know if I can. I'm not going to mew. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Let me do one thing. There is this. Let me change a couple of things.
See if it works. See if it'll let me do it. Boom. Da, 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 da. Was it the right answer? I did. Send you a hoodie. Send me some money, baby. Okay. Now. Whoa. Hold on. Sway plays. That's fucking awesome. I love it. Um. So yeah. So so you add up all the you add up all the um. So you can add up all the things. The one eighty seven. All that. You add them all up. It's a like gate and change. I think it was eight fifty seven. And then you divide by four weeks. You might have used the five weeks. You might have used all five numbers and divided by four. You get a different number. Okay. You remember, always the last ones. Okay. Yeah, you, these are definitely serious seven questions. Okay. Okay, you can do this one, right? Come on. We're going to do this together. So you, uh, you own 1,000 shares at 50, and you have a 20% stock dividend. Let's do this. Just making sure nobody else has questions. Okay. Okay. Stiegelman fam oh Stiegelman Family Farm. Okay. Blast from the past. So let's say you own a thousand shares at 50. And then you get a 20% stock dividend. So you're gonna do I do this. This is all I do. I do 1.2. I basically I take whatever the percentage is and I put one decimal in front of it. So 15 would be 1.15, 10 would be 1.1. Then I just multiply 1,000 times 1 1.2, which is going to be 1,000 times 1 1.2 times, not plus, times 1.2 equals. So you're going to have, at the end of the thing, you're going to have 1,200 shares. And then you do 50 divided by 1.2, the same thing. 50 divided by 1.2. That's going to give you 41667, 666, okay. Okay, that makes sense. But let's try a new one. Let's just, same thing, 1,000 shares. Let's do a 15% stock dividend. I'm going to do 1.15 because I put decimal one, one in there. Then I'm going to do 1,000 times 1.15 equals 1,150. That's 1,150 shares now. Remember, it has to be a zero-sum game. Everything has to work. And then you do 50 divided by 1.15. 1 1.15 equals 50. I'm where this calculator kills me. Divided by 1.15 equals. So that'd be 4347. That's stock dividends. Not so bad, people. Not so bad. Okay. I get it. You get nothing you can do. Okay. Okay, let's get on this one now. Hold on, let me shut that down. Company that's a tender offer to shareholders. Am I taking your test for you? Okay. Hope I'm passing. Okay. Company announces a tender offer to shareholders with the intended by a maximum million. Well, then you're missing part of it. Usually it has something to do um how many they've sold already. So let's say to buy a max of a million shares of its outstanding price at 10 and says no minimum number of shares. I think you're missing part of it. Maybe it didn't go through. But let's say they're willing to buy a million. So if only, a, if say if only 800,000 have been, um, if only 800,000, hold on, you know what? Let me see. Hey, Michael, that's a good video, right? Somebody in disguise, but don't say who. Now, Alex, now let's say they've already subscribed to 800,000. So then you could submit up to 200,000 because they, they did a, a tender offer as an offer to buy. As long as they haven't bought the million, anyone who sends their shares in to be bought, they will be bought. Okay. The, the company will buy them from them. That's literally how it works. Okay. Good. Oh, that. It's funny, my Instagram's like minutes behind. Okay. So I don't know what else to do. You're missing part of the question, but I think that is. Okay. And Maria, Maria, Maria. Okay. Um, yes, if you go to the Series 65, 66 playlist, you will definitely see questions there. Lisa, we're going to get this. Black, yeah, you damn right. Okay. 
Vinicius. That sounds very that's like a that's like a Roman emperor's name. Emperor Vinicius Emisado. Okay, boom. You hear me on that one? That Vin, I would change it to Vinicius, right? To Vinicius, because that's like a that's like a powerful Roman emperor name. Okay. Your favorite PO, we'll get to the okay. So now um if you want to be an advisor, you need this. If you want to just be, here's the thing. If you want to work for a broker dealer, you need the seven and the 66. If you just want to work for an investment advisor, give advice and charge fees, you only need the 65, but you have to get through a firm. The Series 7, I don't know if you're new to this. You might not even be here anymore. But the Series 7 exam is a licensing exam that you need to pass, but it's administered by FINRA. It shows that you have knowledge of the various products, and it's a basic skills exam to make sure that you know that enough to pay enough of rules and the products to be able to give advice and charge commission. So if you want to work as a broker, a, a registered rep, an agent for a or a broker for a for broker dealer, you need to pass the series seven. You can do the series six if you just want to some use of funds and annuities. So there you go. Yep, there you go. Okay, Vinicius, I got you. Okay, okay. Vinicius, I got you, right? I know you said it a bunch of times. I got it. Okay. Um, make sure once you're through the book, make sure you're doing tests. So two weeks ago, make sure you're doing a bunch of make sure you're doing a bunch of um once you finish the book, get through as many tests as you can. That's the best way. Watch my videos. If you don't have time to read, watch my essay exam playlist. It's gonna be the best thing you can do. Positive. Okay. Um, that's fine. So if you understand, so remember buying a put, remember a put gives you the right to sell. That means you have the ability. It's going to be hard. I do the videos on it again. I'm going to do this, but watch and find my basics options. Basics playlist has a lot of good stuff in there. If you buy a put, if you buy a put, you have the right to it's basically having a piece of paper. I don't even, yeah. has a piece of paper that says positive vibes has the ability. Chris, you need a Series 79 for investment banking. So you have this piece of paper that says positive vibes can sell the stock at, say, 50 until the end of October. That's literally what they can do, okay? So they can sell that until the end of whenever it expires, okay? You have the right to sell this. You didn't sell it. You didn't short it. You literally bought the right to sell stock. So if it goes down to, like, 30, you can buy the stock at 30 and immediately sell it because you can use this paper to sell it at 50, okay? So again, uh, buying a put is a right to sell. All you're doing is buying a piece of paper that sells positive vibes can sell the stock at a price, no matter how low it goes, but it doesn't last forever. You have to use it before it expires. So you're bearish. Now, the other side is, if the stock is trading at 30, who's going to buy it from you? Well, no, that would be the seller of the put. So if you buy a put, you buy it from me, say, so you're going to pay me $3 so you can sell it at 50, which means I have to be willing to buy it from you at 50 whenever you tell me to. So you're paying me $3 so that I'll stand there and buy it from you. So if you buy a put, you have the right to sell. If you sell a put, you've you've sold the right to sell, so you are obligated to buy the stock. Boom, okay. No, it's just a um, series. I mean, it can be, but I'm not smart enough for that. This is serious for the Series 7 SI exam, stuff like that. Stiegelman. Okay. Playlist, if you go on my channel, go on YouTube. You should be on YouTube. If you go on the front page, you tab over, and there's a thing that says playlists. Let's see. Can I? No, it's not there. I could do it. But if you go right on the first front page, it says playlists. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna put a video in here for you. Okay, hold on. Uh, there it is. So X Turbo, Exit your bibs. Okay. That right there, I can even say their name. That's a, that's the video that'll help you for the balance sheet stuff. Okay, Stiegelman, I love it. Okay, uh, 
Oh, got it. Yes, right. Boom. You, here's the thing. You have to do, um, you, right, you have to get the numbers first, get the percentage, and then multiply it. Right, so you need the Series 79 to be an investment banker. That's a hard test. Yeah, Gabe, that's what you do. Maybe focus on the... So go through the Achievable course. They're pretty fucking awesome. Go through the Achievable course. They're really, really good. They're phenomenal. Go through those first uh, and then come back on here. That you're gonna, It's going to put you over the top, I promise you. And then watch my playlist. Come on here. Join a study group. Go on to Facebook. Everyone who hasn't done it yet, go on Facebook and join the one that says FINRA exam prep with help from Capital Advantage Tutoring. I'll let you in once I see it after we're done. And you can join study groups. It says chat for each test. It's fucking awesome. See, I almost caught up with everyone. I caught up already. Vinicius, I already answered it like three times. You need the 65. I answered it. Okay. That's very funny. There you go. I like it. Okay. I guess Vinicius wants to be banned. Is that what happens? Is you want to go? Is that is it? You want to get out of here? Okay. Um, everyone, no worries. Anyway, you need sixty-five or the seven and the sixty-six. Okay. You might have been a commercial winner. I'll give you the fact that may not have been paying attention because I was only twenty minutes behind. I'll give you that. Okay. Everyone, not so bad. We had a good one. Hour and twenty minutes. Not so bad. Gabe, I appreciate it. Thank you. Just make sure you do the achievable stuff. They're solid, I promise you. Keep on it. I appreciate it, Gabe. And keep jumping in on these lives and do the Facebook group. I promise you it'll help. Okay. A couple of things. So I'm heading out on the Instagram. I'm shutting her down. I don't know how. To, oh, I guess I have to do it that way. Okay. Boom. Okay. Um, it's funny. I see one person and one or two people on my Instagram. It goes up and down. It's like 48 people came on. People came off. It's crazy. Okay. Um. No, 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 Venetius, you, you didn't even hear my whole thing about your name being a powerful, like it's a Roman emperor's name. I would say Venetius, like I was saying before, I love that name. That's literally what I would think. If I was going to create a, a dynasty of Roman emperors, that would be the name I use. 100%. Like Caesar, who, not Pompeo wasn't one, let's see. You got Augustus Caesar, Julius Caesar, you have Nero, and Venetius. Vinicius. That's I mean, that is literally a Roman, Roman emperor at worst a senator's name. Okay. At two Vinicius. Okay. Okay. Um, everyone, I love being on here. I love this. I'm gonna head out in a couple seconds. Okay, so when does an option have time value? Well, whenever it's not um there you go. Whenever it's not um an option has time value when it has an expired. It always does, right? So any option. In the in what when you add that in what? It's always part of the premium, okay? There's always time value. The only time you wouldn't have time value is like at 359.59 on the day of expiration. It's always going to be so understand premium is always intrinsic plus time value. Time value is like abstract. It's like, yeah, what we think it is. So intrinsic is is in the money. So if you have a 50 call and it's trading at 54, it's four dollars in the money. And then what if the premium's more than four? Everything over that is time value, okay? Time value is just what we pay more than what it's worth, okay? So again, time value is what you pay over what it's worth, okay? Alexandra, boom. I'm glad I helped. Please come out. I'm going to try to do these more and more. I do the YouTube, every, I've been doing the YouTube one every every Tuesday, Thursday since before COVID started. But yeah, boom, I love it. Alexandra, I love it. I'm happy to help. Okay, Um so again, time value is what you pay over. And by the way, Alexandra, the reason I'm good at Alexandra is because I'm a moron, okay? I'm a moron, and I try to explain things on my level. So boom, okay. No, a warrant does have time value. By the way, here's the thing. Even fucking rights have time value, but it's not a lot. So anything, that if uh, any calls, puts, rights, warrants, all have time value. Even if it's the day before expiration, it'll have a little bit of time value. So rights have a little bit of time value. Warrants have a lot. They don't have intrinsic. Warrants do not have intrinsic value. until. So here's the thing. Intrinsic value is like, would it be exercised? So if you have a 50 call, if it's trading anything above 50 or if a 50 warrant or 50 right, if the price is above the strike price, you have intrinsic, okay? 
And, and if the premium is more than that, that's time value. Okay. Now, if you have a 50 put, anything's below it is the intrinsic. And if the premium is more than that, that's time value. Okay. So time value is basic premium minus intrinsic in the money is time value. So everything that has an expired yet is time value. Rights are only 15 to 20 days long, so they have a little bit of time value. But warrants are up to 720 perpetual. They have a shitload of time value. That's kind of it. Okay. Guys, if you take if you're taking the next two days, why are you on here still? You should be sleeping. I will see you guys. I'm heading out. I will see you guys in 47 hours. I'm doing another one Thursday, right? Okay, everyone. Go! Hey.